Yum, yum. Greg here from Pixel Fondue. Happy Friday. Uh, so this video is going to cover a series of nodes called probe nodes. Now, um, I think these are really underutilized. I'm gonna try and show some what I think are really practical uses for them. And a lot of 3D work, you've done a lot of production work. I think you'll agree 3D is often just a big exercise in problem solving. So trying to figure out solutions to problems or desires from clients or whatever. And probe nodes are just another tool in the toolbox to solve problems. So we're going to show how to, for instance, um, have a gradient follow a curve, right? So it doesn't come out of the box in Modo, but we can solve that problem with probe nodes. And we can do a lot of other really cool things uh, with probe nodes to drive objects in animation. And we're also gonna take a look at some probe nodes that come with some of Steve Hill's kits. There's a map probe, a UV texture probe, which combined with the Dex particle kit, I think is one of the most um, awesome, super useful effects you're gonna find. And so I'm gonna show that as well. Uh, he's got a force probe node, um, just a lot of stuff. So we're gonna start with curve probe and a fall off probe and then kind of go from there. So just kind of stick with me. And uh, yeah, let's get started. So this is just, again, just using some simple geometry as an example, but there's oftentimes you'll want a gradient to follow a certain path. Now we have some good gradients in Moto, some good inputs for gradients that is. So if I just uh, kind of go to my uh, material here for this guy, this is the ring material. And if I add a gradient under processing gradient, um, and just do a quick uh, quick set of colors on here. Now it turns black because that's just Moto's um, advanced viewport shader compilation going on. That is something they're definitely working on fixing. So hopefully we'll see some fixes to that. I think a lot of video games nowadays are having some problems with that as well. Uh, just stuttering during shader compilation, right? So right now, this is a probe set to, you have some input parameters here, right? We have lots of input parameters in Moto. I think these sample parameters and input parameters are great. I think they um, make Moto really easy to use in the shader tree, so we can do things like, you know, here we're just doing incident angles. So, and a lot of these show up in the advanced viewport. So here at this instance, we get, you know, this gradient is red, and straight on we get blue, that's pretty cool. But what if we want a gradient to follow along this um, arc here from A to B? Well, we can do that with a curve probe node. So I'm going to just grab these two edges, Alt-C for just a regular loop slice, and put a slice down the middle. And really what I'm doing is I'm just doing a shortcut to making a curve. So I can make a curve out of a set of um, edges just by going over here to the to the edge uh, tab and click um, edges to curves. We'll create a new mesh, all right, spline curve. So now I've got a new spline curve right here. You can see it if I uh, lift it up here. Whoops, I've got my spline curve right here. And I'm actually gonna make the this just uh, a little bit thicker and darker so you can see in the advanced viewport. So we'll just say draw style, wireframe, wireframe, user color, Let's make it sort of magenta that tends to show up pretty well. And just in my advanced viewport options, I can actually bump up like the curve thickness to like two or three. There you see, you know, the curve is much more uh, visible there. So, okay, there's our curve, right? So I'm just gonna take this guy and put it back down to Y. And I'm gonna use this to guide our gradient. I'm gonna do that with a curve probe. So I'm popping up on schematic over here. And I'm gonna drag my curve in, I'm gonna need that. I'm gonna drag my gradient in, because I'm gonna need that. I'm gonna hook up all this stuff with a curve probe. Uh, or sorry, a curve probe node. So here's our gradient, and here's the texture locator, here's our curve. And so hit tab and I can pop open my ad here and I'm type in um, probe. You can see we've got a number of probes here. Channel probe, curve probe, fall off probe, these come with Moto. Force Probe, Map Probe, UV Texture Node. These come with Steve Hill's kits. Uh, did I already say this in this video? If I haven't, I'm gonna say it again. Buy all of Steve Hill's kits. It's like just a handful of bucks to like buy them all. It's like a full point upgrade in Moto. I mean, I mean, it's just, and he adds to them all the time. He, he adds new mesh operations and stuff to these all the time. They're constantly getting updated. He's constantly making new ones. Um, they're, honestly, they're some of the biggest things that happened to Moto in a long time, so. Um, and I'll talk about these a little later in the video. But let's start off just with the curve probes. I'm gonna double click that. I've got that node in the scene now. And if you look at the channels, you'll see things like percentage and distance and 
tangent and length and normal. These are all aspects of a curve of a curve that this probe can analyze. So essentially what a probe will do is you'll hook up something to the probe, usually you know a curve or a fall off, and then you'll hook up a locator or a mesh, some point in space. And what it'll do is it'll probe that 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 object, that curve or that fall off at that defined point in space and give you a value back. Like this is the length of the curve at this point in space. This is the percentage of the curve at this point in space. This is the distance from the curve. So we can use all of those things, right? So I've got, um, so for instance, why don't I do this just to, just to show that really quickly. I'm gonna add a locator to the scene and I'm going to hide uh, this ring mesh really quickly and make sure my locator is gonna be seen. And I'm just going to, I'm gonna turn on verts. I'm going to snap this locator to a vert real quick. So hit X and um, just snap it right there, right? I'm going to drag the locator into the scene. Now I'm going to hook up my curve mesh to my curve probe, turn off snapping, and I'm going to hook up my locator to the input position, right? You see the input position is a matrix. And so these little three dots is a vector and these, um, these uh, three, three sets of three dots is a matrix. And so I'm going to go over here, I'm going to right click, I'm going to say add channel, and I'm going to say world position. And I've got my matrix right there, and I plug that in like that. And so the world position of this locator is being probed by this curve, and it's going to give me a value, right? Um, so I can go to the channels, and I can say the percentage of this locator on this curve is 35%, right? So if I take this guy and drag it over like here, Snap it again. Now the percentage is 50%. If I look at the top, that's halfway through the curve, right? So it knows the curve probe is telling me that this locator is 50% of the way through this curve. And you can imagine how we're going to use that with the gradient. What we want the gradient to do is we want this 0% of the curve at one side of the gradient as an input on the, on the x-axis. And then at the very end of the curve is 100%. And then we want colors along those percentages, right? So that's what we're going to do. And so what we have to do is we have to hook up the texture coordinates here, this position, to this input position right here. The, 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 the tricky part here is, is this is a vector. There's three dots. And this is a matrix. This is three sets of three dots, right? So think of a, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, not a vector, an array. It's easy to think of an array as just a list of things. And a matrix is sort of a, a list of lists. So that's what we're, we need to convert this this array to um, a matrix, right? So we're going to do uh, matrix compose or construct. I think it's compose. I always forget. Oh, actually matrix construct. The little icons are helpful here. This is, um, <laughs> this is, these are Warren's icons. He's so smart. So you can see this is what I want. Dot, 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 two, three sets of dots, right? So I want matrix construct and my input is going to be these three little dots here, right? I'm gonna hook that up there. And then I'm going to hook the output up that's converted that to a matrix to the input position here. Now this curve probe knows the positions of this texture locator of this gradient along the curve, right? And then I'm going to hook up the output, the percentage to my input value right there, my end value of my gradient. And what that basically does is now previously, um, it used the incidence angle as, as the input value. We're going to be using the, this curve probe here. So I'm going to turn my uh, ring back on, this guy right here. Now you'll see in um, the advanced viewport, we're still getting the incidence angle, right? So this is one thing I'd like to see is, is some upgrades to this where we can see our schematic um, connections in the viewport as well. Uh, hopefully we'll get there. I have some suggestions maybe at the end of the video, but right now, if I just press F8 and bring up my little, um, my little guy here, you'll see, or my little preview, you'll see what I'm doing here, right? Zero, I've got cyan, and at 100%, I've got, I've got red. So if I unplug it, we're going back to just that instance angle. If I plug this in, and now we're going, we're, we're just wrapping a gradient around a curve. I mean, it's pretty cool, right? Um, that's just not, uh, that's not something you would normally be able to figure out. But like I said, this is just a, a set of problem solving tools. And there's a ton, a ton of uses for this, right? There's just a ton of uses. Let me just subdue that so it looks a little nicer. Just an absolute ton of uses um, for this. And so I can even, let me just bring up another one real quick. Let's bring up my squiggle. 
And uh, I'm just going to do the same thing. I'm just going to Shift C to you know add a uh, row of edges down in the middle there, and then I'm going to convert that um, those edges to a curve. We'll just do a new uh, curve mesh there. And I'm going to drag that down here. I'm going to add another curve probe, and then I'm going to just add another gradient to my swiggle, right? So add layer, recent gradient. And we'll just make a couple colors here. In fact, I think if I, well, I'll just, um, here, I'll just open an editor. Let's do a whole bunch of them here. We'll just middle click and add a key there. We'll just do a rainbow of flavors, right? Another key here. We'll just go down the rainbow, kind of backwards, I guess. Blue, wind up with some purple. Okay, there we go. Looks like Fruit Loops. Okay, cool, got a gradient. And so we'll just drag this bad boy in here. I'm going to double click the little yellow uh, diamond to get my texture there. I'm going to control D duplicate my matrix construct, replace that input with a new one and plug that into the uh, input position. And I'll plug in my new curve right there. And then my gradient is gonna want this um, output percentage to be input value right there. And then again, let's just bring up our uh, preview to see it. Now you'll notice that there's something has gone awry here. And what it is, is the, um, the gradient texture locator tried to auto size itself to this squiggle, which is sort of off center here. And so you see in the uh, gradient um, uh, texture locator right here, You'll see that there's some positions and scale that's a little bit a little bit off for an, our initial one. Position is a little bit off. The scale is just off a tiny bit, but basically it's zero and one. So if we go back up to our squiggle and just make sure we're set to solid and our position is zero and our size is one, and we're gonna get our rainbow of fruit flavors there. Pretty cool, right? So we have some other uh, things that the some other channels, I guess that the curve probe can return values from. One of, we've been using percentage, we can also use distance. This is distance from the curve. And so just to look at how this works, let's look at our locator again. Let me just make this more readable on the viewport, something like just white and bigger, something like this, so you can see it better. Um, okay, so I'm just gonna snap it to a point on that curve that goes through the middle of our squiggle. And if I look at, uh, then I just want to plug it in here to the input position. So we're just going to replace the gradient texture locator uh, for the moment. And if I look here, this should be zero. If I look at the channels, because it's sitting on the curve, it's zero distance from the curve, right? So I look at channels and I look at uh, distance and it's zero. But if I select this guy, let me just turn off snapping and start moving it away, you can see distance has gone up. Now we're at 125 millimeters, right? So if I just sort of bring this to the edge of my squiggle from the curve, it's approximately 75 millimeters away. So let's take a look and see what we can do with our gradient and how this can help us in shading. So if I remove the locator from the input position and plug our gradient texture locator back in and pop open preview here, now we've got the rainbow of colors going still and I still have percentage going into the input value, but let's change that to distance, and our distance is in there. And it just goes all to purple, right? So let's look at our gradient. I'm just going to edit the gradient full screen. Oops, let's look at the colors on our gradient. So we're just seeing this down here, and that's because the range um, it just, it's only 75 millimeters away, which is still in a 10% category, right? So it's probably based on a meter. So a meter would be 100%, so 75 millimeters would be less than 10%. So let's see what happens if I take this and I delete them and I just take this guy, let's make it maybe green so it shows up a little better, and drag this down to around 10%. You can see it coming in, right? So here's the edge of our you know, squiggle right here, and we're just going away from it, the distance from curve. So now we're, you know, running a gradient instead of, you know, in a circle or along a squiggle, we're going outwards from a curve. And again, there's a bunch of different use cases for this, 
um, when you're animating and you're, you're really wishing you could figure something out in terms of like you know, texturing or something like that. Um, you know, people used to use tricks like they would start with a straight, you know, a straight shape and then they'd do the gradient and they'd morph it into this shape. Here you could just run your gradient, you know, use a curve and a curve probe to direct your gradient. So super useful, right? Yum, yum.